So today what we want to talk about is supernatural stories, what I like to call things from that quantum field. So the thing is, and I'm going to share some of my personal experiences with you guys to kind of show you a different perspective, right, on how reality works and just how these things come into play or come into being. And the thing is that I've discovered is that there's really two of us. There's two marks and there's two of you. And one of you is the one that we experience with our what I call our ego. And the other one is what we experience with what we call our higher self. Now, the thing with me is, and it's, it can happen with you, is once you get plugged in and tune in to this reality or this what we call this true essence of what we call this consciousness or this being of who you truly are, then a voice will start to talk to you. The voice that speaks to you, you will hear it loud and clear. It's your own voice, but the best way to describe it, it comes in an HD form. That's, that's the best way I can describe it to you. Is So when I get information, I kind of I actually channel this information. It comes from my higher self. So first story was before I became, you know, who I am, like the teacher, inspirer, the motivator, before I got my calling to do what I was supposed to do. So prior to that, I was working as an executive sous chef in a pretty much big hotel. It was in South Florida on the beach. And I was basically in charge of about 30 employees, right? So I would work the evening or afternoon shift. So every time I would come in, I'd have to delegate what needs to be done, check stuff. And there's always this one prep prep cook, prep chef. His name is Claudine. So what he would do, he would prepare stuff because we have what we call a concierge. So we had, like, we had VIPs, we had to send up, you know, appetizers, certain, you know, things for, for VIP members that come into the hotel. So I'd always prepare a menu and show them how to, you know, be creative, whatever. So Claudine would always come to me and we would talk to me. And, you know, and then one day Claudine comes up and says, you know, uh, he would call me Chefy. That would be his nickname for me. He would say, hey, Chefy, I got something to tell you. I said, what's up, Claudine? What's going on? He said, you know, uh, my wife had this strange dream and you was in the dream. I said, what are you talking about, Claudine? I don't even know your wife. I never. He said, I know that's strange, but I said, okay, what's up? He wrote, Then he took his pen out. He wrote down three numbers. And he said, uh, she said for you to give you these numbers. I said, what? I said, tell me the dream. He said, the dream says that she was somewhere in a garden. Someone came to her and said, here, give the guy that works with your husband these three numbers. And she described me as what the shift. He said, he works with your husband in the evening and described who I am, me. She never seen me. And Claudine said, that was the fascinating thing. So he gave me the three numbers. So at that time, I was just beginning my spiritual path. You know, just beginning to kind of see how reality works and you know, quantum physics. And, you know, I was I was in this trans time of just trans transmuting. So there's a lot of things that were happening to me, but I wasn't aware. I didn't know the true meaning of them. Until you know now that I've become really embodied in what I am. So anyway, I said, all right. So I put the numbers in my pocket. Now, the, here's the voice. Now this voice just spoke to me. That's the first time I could actually hear an authentic voice. It was my voice. But again, the voice spoke to me. It was more of a very best way I could describe it. It was my voice, but it was in a higher definition, maybe a higher dimension. It just sounded crystal clear was powerful it was it was a very unique voice but it was my voice that's the best way i could describe it before i always have intuitive nudges and hints but this voice spoke directly to me and it says mark you need to play those numbers just like that said, okay so i went ahead and i played the numbers i think i played it for about two days and i got impatience and i said what i said whatever this is it says i'm not gonna waste my time and on the third day i didn't play the number but i was going to the grocery store and i was coming back to go to work so I'm on the highway, six lane highway, and there was not a lot of cars around. So anyway, speeding behind me, I noticed this red car, it was a red Mustang. It sped directly up behind me, then it cut me off out of all six lanes. I said, what's the problem with this guy? Why is this guy cutting me off? He had all this, this traffic here. So it cuts me off. When he cuts me off, the interesting about it, my eyes caught the license plate. The license plate had those exact three numbers, plus it says, T R Y me M E try me. So those three numbers says try me. And the voice says, You need to go try and play those numbers. And I said, Alright. 
So the cutoff day, I think it was noon, one o'clock. So those numbers come out twice daily. Get a one at 1 p.m. and then one at the evening draw. I think the, yeah, the evening draw was at seven. Anyway, I stopped and I played both, like 15, 20 bucks <clears throat> on me. So I, I put it all on numbers uh, straight. And you know what? Those numbers came out that exact night, just the exact way. And it was fascinating. I was like, whoa. And that's when I said, okay, there's something elegant going on here. So anyway, I played the numbers. They came out. And I went to Claudine and I said, hey, man, there's something going on here. Supernatural. So I said, here's a bunch of money. So I gave him a bunch of money. I think I, was, I, think I won about uh, 12000 on those numbers. And I gave him quite a bit of money. So he was happy. So that was her own story, right? See, you see how fascinating that is, right? Never met this person, don't know his wife, but she knew who I was in a dream, my description, everything. And then this voice and this thing came and told me, and then I was not going to play. And then it, the universe came and intervened and see that? So that's a part of your higher self working, right? So that's one story. Here's another one now. So this one occurred uh, quite recently. So there's a new game out. And I think it was a $5 game. So I was, I was, I think I was on my social media feed and it came up and showed this new game. So I said, okay, let me go uh, get a ticket. So I go into the store to go get the ticket. And then it was my favorite store to get the ticket. And then the voice said, you need to get a book. I said, what? A book? I never bought a book before. Look at the scratch off tickets. I was like, that's ridiculous. I don't need to buy a book just to win. I, I know how to do this. He says, no buy the book so, okay and the book was three hundred dollars so i said let me get the a book then the voice says no tell him just like this voice says tell him to take out all the books he has so i said how many books do you have man he says oh i think i got two or three so he brings i said no i got two and then i said okay let me look at it and then the voice says again he says tell, look at the serial numbers on the book which one you're going to buy so i took the book out I look at serial numbers and one of the serial numbers were was had uh eight eight nine nine four 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 and one zeros. Automatically I knew I said, okay, I'm gonna buy this book. He says, All right. So I bought the book, I took home, and I think it was about three days after I said I'll scratch it. So I scratched the book and to make a long story short, in the book I won ten thousand dollars. <throat> right? So that was great. But here's the most fascinating part about that. So I went to redeem it. You know, with that win, you have to go to the lottery office, of course, to uh, to get that. So, of course, I stopped at Publix just to validate it and just to check to make sure, you know, it's right. I checked on the app. The app says it was correct. Um, but I went to go to Publix. And then they checked it and they says, uh, oh, this book is not activated. You, you can't, you can't, re even if you go to the lottery office, you cannot get this money because where you bought it from, they didn't activate the book. So what's supposed to happen is when, anytime you buy anything, maybe a lottery ticket or a book or any scratch off, they're supposed to scan it. And that scan tells the lottery system or lottery lottery system says, okay, this is already in our system. So this is a correct book. So it went to the right place. So it was weird. I said, why? Because I, I seen him when he gave me the book, he activated, put it in, boom, boom, boom. And I think he was activated. So I said, all right, I'll go back to the store. So I go back to him. As soon as I walked in, he says, hey, man, I know why you're here. He says, I don't know what happened. Never happened before. This book is inactive. I don't know why it's not activated. So he says, let me call the lottery office right now while you're here. So so he calls the lottery office. And anyway, they had to manually, he had to manually put it in. So he says, I have a guard before. He says, hey, man. He says, you know why that book wasn't activated? He says, why? He says, because it wasn't supposed to be at this store. They sent me an extra book. It was This wasn't supposed to come here. It was supposed to go to another store. So the lottery sent me an extra. That's why it wasn't in their system. See, when the lottery sends you these books, they automatically have in their system a tracking number of which, which store it goes to. So when you activate it, it pops in the system. So when you activated this, it didn't pop up because they made a mistake and send this book to the wrong store. So, again, look how things work. What are the odds? Me going in there. The wrong book end up at the right store for me. See that? See how things work again? Showing you how the universe works. All right, here's one more. It's not a lottery related. 
So this one, you can see how things are working, right? Because I want to paint the bigger picture for you. So with this one now, it was about, I think five years ago, we had a storm here. You know, Florida has hurricane season. Anyway, this hurricane came, uh, got in my area. It wasn't too bad, but my roof got really damaged. So I estimated the repair. I think it was about ten, eleven thousand, twelve thousand dollars to to repair the roof. So I was going to go ahead and pay somebody to repair the roof. So I went around and got estimates, and so it was yeah between ten to twelve thousand, right, to to do the roof. So okay, as as I was going, I said okay, I'm gonna go, go repair the roof. So I drove out that day, and then two doors down, it was my neighbor, and. I seen a city truck, you know, and they were repairing the roof. And I said, wait a minute, what's the city doing repairing the roof? I thought it was private. So I asked him, I said, uh, how do you repair this roof? What's going on? He says, oh, because of the storm, they're they're giving grant money for people to, to fix their home. I said, really? He says, here, go to this website. And I said, okay, I didn't plan on going to the website. I was just saying, I was just gonna pay it, man. Then the voice says, Go to the website. I said, okay, so I'll go to the website. I filled out the loan, the qualification. I think it was like two hundred dollars uh, processing fee or something like that. But I paid it, and I didn't think <clears throat> I didn't think anything of it. So on my way, I went to get some uh, estimates, and uh, one guy quoted me uh, ten thousand. And okay, so okay, I fine. Anyway, I got the uh, grant uh, letter back. It was about two to three weeks later and I was approved right not only for ten thousand but I think it was an eighteen thousand dollars grant to fix my home so I had more than enough money to do the roof so I was ready to call the guy and the voice says don't call the guy he says wait I said, okay so you see, see see the theme here I'm plugged in I'm listening I'm open to my higher see this I'm so connected and tuned in to my what I call higher self that is navigating my realities navigating my world this is what I'm teaching and helping people to uncover in their lives. So tap into that. I tapped into that and you can see the marvelous stuff. So anyway, I go to get coffee. And in the coffee shop, this guy was in front of me. And on his shirt, it was his company, a roof contractor fixing. The voice again says, talk to that guy. So I talked to him. I said, hey, give me an estimate. Give me his car. He said, send me pictures. So I sent him pictures. And um, anyway, to make a long story short again, he replied back to me. He says, hey, man, I could do your whole roof for you. Everything I could give you, I think he said a, a six months or a one-year warranty on it, the roof, and for only $6,000. See that? So one guy was charging me ten. dollars you know, My ISF says, wait. This guy's only 6000 My roof was fixed. See how powerful that is? So it shows you that there's something highly etherical going on here, even crazier. So what I'm showing you guys is that there is this world or this element beyond what we can physically comprehend. And if you can tap into it and see how it works, then it can change and you can master your life. So I share those stories with you to show you that once you start to become aware of the other side of the universe or the other side of reality or once you start to pair your mind that's when things will start to be revealed to you and that's when you will start to take your power back so there is this, always this part of you just like it's in me it's in you the only difference is you haven't been taught how to correctly connect they'll never show you how to correctly connect this isn't teach this isn't taught anywhere so it's there and extends now imagine when you can discover this, and just about the few stories I share with you, look at the improvements and how it changed my life and how it can help you. Imagine what it can do once you can tap into that part, right? So there you have it. So hopefully that could help you on your journey, and then you can see things in a different light and use it to your power. Thanks, guys.